Sometimes when you're videoing, people look at you like you're crazy. Okay. Not my sweetheart. What? I get looked at like I'm crazy sometimes. Of course, it looked that damn Yankee. Oh, <laughs> well, we just got to Kissimmee State Park, and on the entrance road coming in, I saw that little tortoise. So we're driving to the park campground area and we also just saw a baby uh, deer. This is some pretty dense brush. Very heavily wooded through here. This is Lake Kissimmee State Park. We're here for two nights. The gobbler. The turkey season ended last weekend. Okay, so we just got to our campsite. We're number 35. I'm digging it. Um, I, I might like this campsite better than the last campsite we were at at Silver Springs. How nice this is. It's very private. It's small, but it's big enough. I really like it. I like it a lot. And then from this angle, you can see the privacy is very good here. And we're closer to home. This is in Lake Wells, which is actually about 40 minutes away from our house. I'm more comfortable, I guess, with these surroundings and especially the tick situation. So in that regard, I'm glad to be at a different site. Looking forward to a couple fun-filled nights. About 30 minutes ago, I took Lucy and Lily on a walk throughout the park. And down this way, we saw four deer. So this is our first night here. So yeah. far, we've seen five deer, five deer. a turkey, a gopher, gopher. Gopher tortoise. Yes, yes, we have. It was quite nice to see the deer. And now we have a little campfire. We have everything we need right here. Life is so simple. So it's day two here at Kissimmee State Park and we have found a little sign and we're gonna go follow that and see where this leads. You can see Lucy's ready to go again. It's uh, about 8.15 on a Thursday morning. Youth camp. Oh. Now this is the boat ramp. These are the docks. I guess that's the the camp store. You think? I think so. But it's closed. It's closed on this day. And they have restrooms here. This is a pretty big marina. There's room for a lot of boats here. Quite a few boat slips. There is a- Look at the deer out there walking. Oh, I do, I do. Oh my, look at him. Look at that. that turkey, that lady is feeding that wild turkey. That must be the camp turkey.
That wild turkey was in the campsite right next to ours. Maybe they'll come to our campsite. Or when they see Lucy and Lily, they're gonna go the other way. So I had eggs for breakfast and a little bird just flew in and is on top of my pan eating the leftover egg. <laughs> so the power went out at this campsite and I was in the middle of heating up some spaghetti. So I used my Jackery to power my toaster oven. So now my Jackery is down to 83% charge and I've hooked this solar panel up to it. Um, it says nine watts, 10 watts right now, but a second ago it was up to about 25 watts. This is only a hundred watt panel. And then over here, I have these Renogy uh, solar panels. This is also 100 watts. And I have it plugged into the camper because our refrigerator is currently running off of the camper battery. So this is the first time I've had to use my solar panels and it's a perfect um, testing opportunity. In two weeks, we're going to South Dakota and several of the campsites there don't have power. And so we will be using our solar panels. But um, I only have two right now. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever had to use them. Um, I can say that this Renogy suitcase solar panel is pretty heavy. Um, the Jackery solar panel is extremely light and easy to easy to uh, maneuver around. Uh, the Jackery solar panel was in the three hundred dollar range. Um, the Renogy solar panel, I think it was like one hundred and thirty. So it's a little bit of a price difference there, but um, it's a fun testing opportunity for us. Now this is a pretty shady site, so I'm having to constantly reposition these panels to get the maximum sunlight. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting is this uh, Luna Rover, for whatever brilliant reason, the people that manufactured this uh, ZAMP solar uh, connector decided to reverse the polarity. So I had to get this uh, polarity um, reversal cable. And I'm wondering if that is not um, causing a disconnect somewhat with the power. I'm not getting as much power as I would uh, without this piece right here. It's uh, causing a loss of power, I believe because this solar panel doesn't seem to be performing that well. Um, it says, I don't know if you can see it, 12.9 volts. And then when I click to amps, 3.5 amps. Okay, so to get watts, um, I would multiply the amps times the volts. So 3.5 amps times 12.7 volts. Okay, so that's giving me around 45 watts for the Renogy solar panels. And now, right now, I'm getting 60 watts off of the Jackery. And that seems to be pretty consistent. I think I'm getting more power through the Jackery. But again, that could be that loss of uh, power through that conversion cable. And my cable's longer. I think that might have something to do with it too. So I don't necessarily think it's the panel. Um, I think it's uh, most likely the length of my cable and uh, that adapter that's causing 
a loss in power between the panel and the camper. Although, I'm reading the numbers right here at the panel. So I would think that those numbers are an indication of what it is at the panel, not necessarily at the camper. If that's the case, which I think it might be, then this panel is not producing as much energy as the Jackery panel. Huh. But the Jackery panel is almost three times the cost. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. If anybody knows, I'd love some advice here. I'm getting 62 watts right now of power through my Jackery. You know, this is pretty exciting to me. Um, this is the first time I've, like I said, I've used these panels. Um, and I am um, a beginner. I know that my system is very rudimentary. But it is a lot of fun to play with. And, uh, to, you know, just to try to figure out what, what's going to happen. And to recharge your system without the use of electricity through the shore power. One thing I will say that even though I'm pulling in 60 watts right now, my percentage of power on this Jackery is 83%, and that has not changed. So this thing must power up very slowly. Okay, so take a look at this. On my battery, I have a lead acid battery, cheap lead acid battery that came with this camper. Um, I attached this uh, uh, a volt reader onto the battery and it's um, you know Wi-Fi and I've got the app on my phone so I can always look at my phone and see how much the um, the camper battery is uh, is charged so it says right now 94% it was at 92% so that Renogy a uh, solar panel does seem to be working, and like I said, it is um, powering this refrigerator. So even though it's powering the refrigerator, it's still, uh, the, the percentage on the battery is still coming up. Pretty impressive. So this is my solar system setup. So we had a little issue earlier with this Dometic fridge. Um, when the power went off, um, I couldn't get the Dometic to run off of the camper battery. And as it turns out, this Dometic has a low, medium, and high setting. And when you are using the starter battery, which is the car battery, the refrigerator has to be set on high, or it should be set on high. And when you're using um, the battery only from the camper or boondocking, you have to change the uh, the, the setting on the uh, Dometic to low to get it to run. So, um, good little trial for us when we lost power here. Uh, we learned something today. So. so, this is our lazy Friday afternoon. We are attempting to hike a trail here at Kissimmee State Park. It's a little over two miles. It's six o'clock on Friday night. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, girls. Come on, Lucy. So we'll see how this goes. It's a little warm. That's why we're, we've got such a late start and I made some jalapeno and cabbage and potato foil packets that we will put in the toaster oven when we get back. So it's going to be a late dinner tonight. We have a little armadillo up here. Will they bite? Yeah. Lily, get that, get that armadillo. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. <laughs> 
This way, Lucy. This way, baby. Lucy, look. Here it is. Here it is, Lucy. Go get it. Look at that little armadillo. <laughs> we just ran across a, what do they call it, a cubby a quail? There were only two, only a male and a female. They were pretty healthy looking. Two deer, three of them. Three of them. That's three, wasn't it? Three of them, yeah. big deer. The white-tailed deer is one of the hardest animals to hunt because they're so smart. Are they? They are. They have tremendous smelling ability, hearing ability, and they can sense when something is wrong. They listen to the birds, the squirrels. If they see something out of the ordinary on the ground, they know it. We think that Lily might need some extra hiking. Don't know if she's going to make it. <laughs> you going to make it, Lily? So these are aluminum foil packets for tonight. We, we have the jalapeno sausage, cabbage, potatoes, red onions, mushrooms, and a little bit of uh, green pepper and some light sour cream on top of it. This is the second time we've had these. They're pretty good and very easy to make. So I prepared this before our hike and then when we got back with our hike I just put them in the toaster oven, cooked them for an hour on about 400 degrees. Very easy. Very good. You like that sweetheart? Mm -hmm. As we're packing up and ready to leave, okay. Lily jumps in the truck. She's ready to go home. Come on, baby. Put her in the back. <laughs>